And welcome back. I hope you've all been doing well. So tonight we have the final episode of our Lutris review. And we're going to talk briefly about setting up our various uh, store accounts, whether it's GOG or Humble Bundle or uh, Steam. And then we're going to talk about how to install a Windows game without going through one of those particular stores. So for those of you wondering, I have been out for quite a while, actually. Um, I went through a uh, complete remodel of the entire house. I had some work issues going on and so forth. Uh, but it seems that things have died down, so I'm going to slowly work my way back into creating content again. And uh, this video is going to be rather short uh, for a couple of reasons. One, because we don't have a whole lot to go over uh, to wrap up our review of Lutris. And number two, this is a good way for me to refresh myself with uh, content creation as far as editing goes and script writing and so on and so forth. All right, so with that said, uh, let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so I had initially thought about doing a review of what we've covered so far up to this point. However, uh, there was a lot of information that we went over, so I think it would be more beneficial for the viewer to go back and watch episode one, uh, episode two, and three to catch up to this point. So in the interest of time, we're going to go ahead and skip that, and we're going to jump right into this. So the first topic of tonight, we are going to talk about how to link your, uh, your external store account, whether it's GOG or Humble Bundle or Steam, uh, to Lutris. So to do that, the first thing we want to do is go ahead and open up Lutris. So I'll come down to my show applications. I'll go over to gaming utilities and then we'll find Lutris and go ahead and fire it up. All right. Now to find your various stores, if you come under sources, you'll see that uh, I believe these are default. You'll have GOG, Humble Bundle, Epic, and so on and so forth. Uh, you can change the sources and add and uh, take away whatever stores you want. But in our case for tonight, we're going to go ahead and use GOG uh, because the, the process is pretty much identical for all these different storefronts. And you'll notice that on the right-hand side, under sources for each particular store, you'll see a little icon of a person. It says connect, so you want to click on that. And it's going to bring up the uh, login page, the pop-up for login. And you'll put your email address in the first line and then put your password in on the second. And then hit login now. Now it's going to send you a security code to your email. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in now. And then hit continue. And then you can see it's thinking. So we'll go ahead and click on GOG. And uh, I've already bought one game on this. So here we go. Uh, so to add a game to this, let me hit on the refresh real quick. All right, so to add a game, let's go ahead and open up GOG. And I need to log back in. And put in my password. All right, so now we're in GOG. Let's go ahead and uh, purchase a game. And let's see what we've got here. Uh, the Witcher, I already have that. Cyberpunk. Hmm, let me see. Silent Hill. Or Silent Hill 4, The Room. There's got to be something really cheap here for demonstration purposes. So let's scroll down a little bit. Ah, here we go. Cheesy horror game. It's 99 cents. Let's click on buy now. Go to our cart. Go to checkout. And we'll go ahead and use Google Pay. Hit continue. And the next adventure awaits. So now we'll go back into Lutris and we'll hit the refresh. And it will populate with our recently purchased game. All right, so now we need to go ahead and download the game so we can actually access the files to install it because it won't install directly from the website. So we'll go back into uh, GOG and go ahead and click on the game itself. And download and install now. Uh, we just want to download. So the EXE is downloaded. So we'll go ahead and minimize. Now we'll come back into here. 
Now, when you click on the game itself, uh, you notice down at the bottom uh, left-hand side, you'll see the title of the game, and below that, you will see uh, install. So you can click on that, uh, lo uh, locate install game, etc. And then we're going to click on install. We're going to use Wine, hit install. And then it's going to install it to my home directory, which is fine. You can change this to wherever you want it installed. You can also create a, a Steam shortcut. You can add it to your Steam um, section as well. So we'll hit continue. And we're going to go ahead and hit install. And here we go. Now we're going to go through the installation process through Wine, or I should say complete the installation process through Wine. Hit OK. And yes, I've read the EULA. Hit Install. And we'll wait it out. And as you can see, we're installing some dependencies, DirectX 9.0. They may take an additional, uh, take an additional few minutes. All right, we are fully success. We can go ahead and exit. And we can close out of this. Now you notice on the uh, bottom left-hand side under the title, and now it says play. So let's go ahead and try it out. Cross our fingers. All right, so that takes care of that. Um, as you can see, the game worked fine. Uh, also, keep in mind, too, that we are using Linux, so there are games out there that uh, may have issues, uh, may not work properly. Uh, we, we all know that the, um, the first-person shooters, the AAA slop out there that uh, uses kernel-level anti-cheats is not going to play nice with Linux. So if you're using a game that is fairly obscure, um, please consider going to ProtonDB, uh, the website, and... Uh, Check that out to look for any compatibility issues that you may have or you may encounter, put it that way. All right, so that takes care of our how to uh, configure and uh, your storefront and then how to install a game. So now we're going to take a look at Windows games. So what if you're not using a storefront? What if you're getting a game from another source other than GOG or Humble Bundle or Epic or whatever? Um, how do we install those? So that's, that's a bit of a different process. And I'm not going to show you where to find these games. That's up to you. But I'll walk you through on how to install one uh, here very quickly. So 
Uh, give me a few minutes here to find the game, get it downloaded, and I'll be right back. All right, so let's go ahead and install a, uh, a Windows game or a game that maybe you do not buy through um, GOG or Ubisoft or Steam or whatever. Um, so this demonstration, I'm going to be using Resident Evil 2. And uh, for all intents and purposes, I actually do own this game. Um, I did buy it uh, through Steam. I also have it on console as well. So we'll go ahead and close out of this. Now, what we need to do is uh, to do it, to do our install. Once you have your game installed, or not installed, once you have it downloaded, uh, we need to go up to the top left-hand corner. We have a little plus sign that says Add Game. Click on that. We want to come down to where it says, I'm sorry, come up to where it says Launch a Windows Game from an Executable. We'll click on that. Go ahead and put the name of the game in the game name. And then hit Install. Uh, we're using Wine uh, for the setup file, so hit Install again. And the uh, installation directory is going to be my home directory for games uh, for Resident Evil 2. And you can create a desktop shortcut if you want, an uh, application menu shortcut, or link it to your uh, Steam, short, uh, Steam account. So we'll hit Continue. And now we need to go ahead and browse to our executable. So we'll go to Downloads. Resident Evil 2, setup.exe, hit OK, and then click on Install. Go ahead and move this out of the way. And we're going to hit English, hit OK. Hit Next, hit Next again. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and browse to Home directory, Ray, and down to games. Use that directory there. Hit OK. Hit next. Yes. Then hit install. And let it do its thing, and we'll be right back when it's finished. All right, so I'll pop this right into the game. Uh, there were some additional dependencies and some run times I had to install after the game actually was installed. You saw me clicking through that. Uh, you might have to go through the same thing. Go we'll ahead and just uh, space to confirm everything. Confirm, confirm, confirm. Confirm. So I agree to terms of service. Okay, okay. Good grief. All right, I'm gonna play as Claire. Grab assisted. We're just gonna check the game out for a few moments and then we'll shut it down. Look, man, I'm serious, okay? I saw this with my own eyes. Oh, I believe you, buddy. I believe you. <laughs> just tell us a story. Tell us a story. Okay, well, it was last Friday night. I was walking home from the bar. And this woman started coming towards me. She was staggering, you know, so I, I figured she was drunk. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, tell us, be honest now. How many All right, so I think you get the idea. Yeah, the game works fine, so let's go ahead and close out of it. Get all these scenes, get quit. Yes. And exit. 
go ahead and close out of this. And there we go. Now, um, one thing I do want to talk about real quick before we wrap it up is that if you want to change the artwork for your games, you simply just right click on it, go to configure, and then you uh, click on the icon, uh, the cover art, and then browse to wherever the uh, cover art is that you want to replace it with, select it, and then hit uh, save up here, and then you're good to go. All right, um, so that wraps it up. Um, if you are new to Lutris, I recommend going back, as I said at the beginning in the intro, going back to the uh, first few episodes and watching those to catch up to where we left off tonight. And you should walk away with a pretty good understanding on how to manage your games uh, through Lutris, whether it's ROMs, Steam, um, Windows-based games that are that don't come from a particular store or using the actual storefront themselves. So I do thank you all for watching. Um, the next video coming up that I'm working on now, I've actually kind of been working on it a little bit here and there in my free time is creating an ecosystem uh, between Linux and Android. Uh, so you can answer text messages on your desktop or on your phone, um, speaking of phone. Uh, also um, file sharing, uh, photo sharing, and so on and so forth. It, kind of like what you have with Apple, with the iPhone and the iPad or, or, or a MacBook or a Mac or whatever. Um, so anyway, that video will be coming up uh, pretty soon. Uh, I got a little more research to do and some tinkering to do on my end to kind of tweak some things and figure some things out. But once I do and I have that finished, we'll go ahead and um, so once I do, so once I do, we'll go ahead and have that. As you just saw just a second ago, there messages are now coming to my uh, Pop OS install uh, from my Android, and I'm using KDE Connect for that. But we'll walk through all that together. Now I'm rambling, so let me shut up and go ahead and get out of here and close up the video. So have a good night and uh, stay safe out there.